Welcome back everybody to another indie MMO devlog. This week I wanted to optimize my game a bit and see how well it scaled with large numbers of players. I kind of arbitrarily chose to target 100 concurrent connections on my game server, but as you'll see, I was actually able to hit that pretty easily without crashing, though it did uncover a lot of scalability problems in my game code. So we'll talk about what those were and what I did to optimize them. Just so you guys know what we're working with here, my game currently runs on a $6 a month server from a VPS provider called Hosthatch. They seem to provide the most CPU power per dollar compared to any other VPS I looked into, and so far I'm pretty happy. So the first thing I wanted to do was establish a baseline of how my game performs with 100 players. Before this, I actually tried to simulate a lot of concurrent connections by just opening a bunch of tabs, but that was pretty painful, so what I decided to do was build a bot, which would just log in and run in a circle, or really it runs in a square, but that's just because it was easier to code. This is pretty close to a worst case scenario as far as the game's concerned, because every player sees every other player, the game server has to send large update packets to everyone. If the 100 players were more spread out in the game world, we wouldn't need to send nearly as much data. As you can see, the load on the server spiked up as all the bots connected. Two main things stood out to me. There was a huge spike in heap allocations, and the frame time on the server started peaking at about 23 milliseconds. Just for reference, my game runs on a 32 millisecond fixed interval, so it's pretty important stability-wise that every physics tick completes in that time. For the heap allocation problem, I did a bit of pprof analysis and determined that over half my allocations were coming from my serialization code. A lot of those allocations came from some lazy coding, but a lot also came from the serialization library that I was using, which performed all of its serializations by using reflection. So I decided I could kill two birds with one stone and hand write all of my serialization code from scratch. And when I say hand write, what I really mean is write a completely different tool that generates handwritten serialization code. So I did that. And don't worry, I won't bore you with too many details, I'll just give you the high level of how it works. Basically, I made a package called COD, don't ask what it stands for because I don't really know. I just like three letter package names and it's kind of like encoding or decoding. Anyways. COD is a standalone code generation app which goes through your package and looks for a struct directive that indicates that you want to generate some handcrafted serialization code for your super important game struct. The code doesn't always turn out pretty, but it does the trick. As far as COD's concerned, you can think of any struct as just a list of things to be serialized. Fixed width struct members are relatively easy, we just copy their bytes into a serialized array of bytes. Variable width struct members, like slices and maps, are a little bit more difficult. For slices, we just have to encode the size of the slice, that way the decoding side knows how many elements it needs to decode. Then for maps, we can do the same thing, but we just encode it as a list of key value tuples. Then finally, if we encounter another struct as a struct member, we can just call the COD generated encoding or decoding function depending on which way we're going. There's a few other minor edge cases that I'm going to skip, for things like pointers and strings, but one thing I will mention is tagged unions. A lot of times you're not sure what you're going to decode. For example, you might have multiple different message types, or maybe you have multiple gameplay components that you want to put into a list. Regardless, we can serialize these as well with the COD union directive, which will prepend a tag to the serialized byte stream. The decoder uses that tag to determine which deserializer it needs to use. Building COD was a fun little experiment, it's definitely not perfect and it's a little bit thrown together as of today, but you can check it out on my GitHub if you like. Now that we generated some super fast handcrafted serialization code, let's rerun our benchmark and see how we did. As you can see, we were able to reduce our allocation rate from over 350 megabytes per second down to less than 100 megabytes per second. Also, the peak physics time went down from about 23 milliseconds to just under 16 milliseconds. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this result. I think there's definitely some more optimizations I can do in the network and physics code, though because I did change a lot of the networking code, I did want to do a little bit of stability testing. So I left a game tab open on my computer to see how long it would stay logged in, and it ended up lasting over 70 hours, then I checked it and for some reason I couldn't move the player. But after refreshing, everything went back to working, so I guess there's still some issues to solve, but we can tackle those in the future. That's all I have for this week. As always, an absolutely massive thank you to all the supporters on YouTube, GitHub, and Patreon. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.